Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons here at the GeoN 2022 conference in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I have the pleasure of being the Esri booth. We're going to learn a little bit about what they have to offer. But first, I want to get an introduction with, uh, well, go ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Stuart Penninger. I'm a solution engineer at Esri, the worldwide leader in geospatial technology and spatial excellence. Well, that's, a, that's short and to the point, but everybody does know Esri. They do yeah. some amazing things. Uh, tell us what is going on here at your booth. Yeah, so today I'm really excited to show you all ArcGIS Geoanalytics Engine, which is the integration with Spark and the ArcGIS API for Python. And it gives us the ability to run on a cloud native environment. Currently, we're running on a Microsoft Azure Databricks cluster, and it is a, allowing you to access your data wherever and whenever you want to and handle massive, massive swaths of data. Today, we're going to be looking at about eight terabytes of data and being able to process it like that. Excellent. So the first thing to point out is that this is really, we're running on Microsoft Azure, but we can also run it on AWS, on a Google Cloud platform. This is all running on Databricks. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is pulling in data from an S3 bucket. And so the first thing that we're doing is going out to that S3 bucket, grasping and looking for all of that information in there, and also transforming it by enabling it both in space and in time by adding a time field to our data itself. Well, hold on, what are we transforming and what are we turning this into? I mean, it's Geoanalytics Engine. What analytics are we trying to do? Yeah, so traditionally, Esri, we are the leader in spatial <laughs> analytics. So, but before we get to the analysis, most of the analyst's time is spent on the ETL process. ETL? Which is extracting, transforming, and loading all of your data. Great. And that takes up, I think if you were to ask analysts, that takes up 75 to 80% of their time, and it's tedious. The goal of ArcGIS Geoanalytics Engine is to cut down on that process, just trying to eliminate it altogether. So that way, we're about to read in of eight terabytes of data, and transform it by at enabling it spatially and adding that time field in less than a minute. So that, this, is, this is all point data, right? Yes, this okay. is billions of records of point data related to cell phone coverage in the United States. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is just display all of that information, including the devices, who manufactured it, the device models. There's a ton of different information inside of this table itself. And we can even scroll all the way to the side to see all the information contained within these billions of points. And I know I just said we enabled that timestamp field. So if we scroll all the way to the end, you can see we have our XY point geometry and our timestamp field itself. Great. And it did that for all 19 billion records. Wow. And how fast did that get accomplished? So this command took 54 seconds. This command took 10 seconds. So nearly in instantaneously. Almost less than a minute. Yeah. So. It's important to point out, I'll say it, and I'll foot stomp here, this data has 16 billion records. And typically, when analysts would run tasks like this, it could take an entire day, it could take an entire work day, sometimes with even larger data sets. That's something you turn on Friday afternoon before you leave for work, and you come back Monday, and you're like, I hope there was no system reset, and this ran the entire weekend. What's the, uh, what's the learning curve for getting onboarded with something like this? Yeah, so obviously, you're going to need to know a little bit about Python development being able to code Python. Data scientists who are familiar with Spark will be able to use this, you know, really, most data scientists I would say are familiar with Python or familiar with Spark. This is bringing that synthesis with Spark and the ArcGIS API for Python. So the learning curve is you need to know Python, you need to know a little bit about Spark. You probably need a little, you need to know a bit about cloud computing. As I mentioned, we're running this in a Microsoft Azure environment. You can also run it on AWS, and we hope to test on Google Cloud Platform going forward as well. Great, so now that you've done all this, okay. what next? Let's go ahead and start getting into trying to gain some insight from this data set. So the first thing we want to do is begin to aggregate those points into hex bins, which is what we're going to do where we start just start our initial exploratory analysis. Now that is a hot topic. Why is hex bins a uh, why, why is hex bins a thing? And I, and I'm a fan of them, but I don't think everybody understands why they're a great organizational layer. Uh, first of all, hex bins just look great in a map. They're well, there, there's that. <laughs> But, but even organizing things spatially by some type of geometry is, is important for a lot of reasons. Yeah, exactly. So if you're looking at 16 billion points on a map, it, it, it almost means nothing. It, how can you decipher that? Hexpins allow us to group data 
into specified areas so that we can look at this. I believe these hex bins are being uh, created at the 5,000 meters. So that gives us a little bit of beginning to generalize our data so we can gain a little bit of insight. Because when things are so granular sometimes, you're not gonna be able to derive any insight from that. It's just yeah. too much. How are you going to go through every single point? It's almost impossible and that analysis would take forever and you know, go from being almost real time with GeoAnalytics Engine to you know, once again, a forensic investigation that's historical almost in nature. Absolutely. So what we're doing here is we're creating those hex bins. We've created the geometry, which has created those 5,000 meter hex bins. And now we're going to begin to look at it spatially, begin to visualize it on a map. This is the result of that work that we just did inside of the notebook, which is added as a typical hosted feature layer that you could find inside of your ArcGIS Enterprise or an ArcGIS Online. And this is what it's all going to look like at the end. And just a reminder of what this data is actually displaying yeah. here. So this is cell phone activity data, and really it's showing areas of high connectivity in your dark red, low connectivity in your white or yellowish areas, and then areas where we don't have any data in these disconnected areas where there are no hex bins. One of the things I want to point out, though, is that this doesn't necessarily look that helpful, does it? Like, can you discern any significant patterns from this? Well, it depends on what kind of analyst you are, but, <laughs> yeah. it's, but I'll, I'll, I'll play your game. Yeah, you, no. can't, you can't really <laughs> discern any of that. So typical spatial analysis would lead us to maybe want to do a hotspot, which is what you can do directly inside of the notebook as well. Oh, excellent. That is, well, that's a game changer because yeah. it, it required some interpretation. Now it just is a lot more simplified. It jumps I love that. right out yeah. at you. And really, that's the integration with the Python API and Spark. So we've done all of that ETL process up top. We've gone into our analysis, and we're already deriving insight of areas of hotspot and connectivities, low spots. And these are all statistically significant because we're using Esri's spatial analysis track record and tools that everyone's familiar with. If you've used ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro or used ArcGIS Online and used the hotspot analysis, this tool is available to you right now as a geoprocessing capability. Oh, that's incredible. So, uh, it, well that brings up my next question is, you have all these visualizations now, how do you get them into those programs? How do you get them out of here? So, how do you, get, what's the integration? Well. You're jumping, you're jumping ahead Am a little I bit. Jumping in? I'm gotta, excited user yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a <laughs> tell, me, tell me where it is. <laughs> we got a little bit more analysis to go through. Oh boy. But we're going to get to it at the end where we bring it all together. So like we said, that this is a cell phone data set. Okay. And we are at GeoN. We're working with intelligence customers, defense customers, public safety customers, people that are doing search and rescue operations to hopefully find and track individuals based off cell phone activity. Now, you can use that information inside of here where we've created a bounding box over a specific area and then begun to look at a specific facility of interest and identify unique cell phone IDs and the individuals that they have dwelled with okay. inside of a 30 meter distance for five minutes. So we can see where these individuals are, where they've dwelled, and who they've dwelled with. I see. So all this information is once again returned in a feature layer where we can see all of the unique IDs associated with this area, the unique phones, and the individual, the area where they are. Next is part of the movement tools and as part of that integration with the Python API, we can begin to look for co-travelers and then reconstructing the tracks of these individuals and bringing it all together in a common operating picture inside of an ArcGIS dashboard. Excellent. So we can zoom in and begin to select specific routes and reconstruct the tracks of those individuals as they move throughout the country during a specific time frame and look at that specific ID associated with that unique phone. So you can see that this individual is in Washington, in Salt Lake City, in San Francisco, all over the place, while this individual was more localized to the Mid-Atlantic region. So to really conclude this ArcGIS Geoanalytics uh, little chat we're having, it's important to note that we've read in 16 billion records, and we've done that in less than a minute. We've aggregated all that data into hex bins, we've spatially filtered our massive data set, done analysis, finding statistically significant hotspots, we found dwell locations for individuals regarding their cell phone, and we've been able to reconstruct the tracks of that individual as they move throughout the United States as well. 
How much does the uh, geoanalytics engine rely on on uh, your servers as opposed to if I want a deployable solution to something like this? Yeah, so ArcGIS geoanalytics engine is going to be available both in uh, connected and disconnected environments. Okay. So you're going to be able to deploy this behind your firewall completely air-gapped from the internet, or you're going to be able to run it on you know, your own cloud infrastructure on the public internet if you'd like to. Excellent. So you're going to have a ton of different deployment capabilities and options and you're going to be able to pull all of this information together to bring together that Spark native big data analysis. Because we all know with how quickly and how fast data is growing exponentially every day, every week, every month, every year, that big data is going to be key to understanding what's going to happen next and how we can make decisions, not just make a decision, but informed contextualized decisions with decision makers for the best possible outcome in any situation. Well, Stuart, thank you very much for a wonderful overview of ArcGIS Geoanalytics Engine. I appreciate it. It was oh, awesome. Thank you so much, and, man. And uh, this it. is great. This is Adam Simmons of Project Geospatial. We'll talk to everybody next time. Thank you so much.